Welcome back. If you haven't watched episode one yet, click here to learn what GIS is, why we're talking about it, and why I have a penguin on my desk. Let's set the stage for what's happening next. My goal is to equip you to be able to make your own GIS map of a disease or epidemic. So what do you need in order to be able to do that? There are two things. You need to look at other GIS maps and see what works well and what doesn't so that you can notice important patterns in relationships. And second, you need to decide what to map. In our case today, that's epidemics. So we need experience with epidemics. How could we get experience with an epidemic? Congratulations! You've been automatically enrolled in a global pandemic. Lucky you. Besides your personal experience as of late, it would be helpful to know a little bit about the top 10 epidemics of human history, or at least what we've learned from them. So let's dig in. Humanity used to think of disease as some sort of punishment from deities who were just trying to punish groups of people for something they did that was against their will. And after that idea, Faded, we started thinking of miasmas, which was like a smell that if you were too close to it for too long, you were going to get sick. Essentially, our understanding of disease was based on superstition and guesswork. Now we base our understanding on science. Think dissections, anatomy, experiments, microscopes, and maps. But one of these things is not like the other, right? Maps? How is that a scientific tool? Around the time of Charles Dickens, one man turned from his microscope to a map, and the science of epidemiology was born. So that's where you come in. In today's assignment, you'll choose between some of Earth's most destructive epidemics and explore how they started, how they spread, and how they were eventually stopped. Click here to get started.